Morning. 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 How's everyone doing today? Fine. Wonderful. Good. Uh, it's 20 after, so let's we'll get started here. Uh, just in case anyone hasn't met me, I'm Harris from the Sport Update. Uh, we have some other people in the room. We have our publisher, my mother, Roxanne Toes. Services manager uh, and photographer. Uh, who else do we have in here? We have Bill DeFranzo somewhere back there. We have a couple of people who have come really far to the show. I wanted to point out we have Hammers here. Where are you, Hammer? Yeah. <laughs> okay. We also have Frederic Sim from France. We have some other Canadians there in the back, but you guys come every time. More English. <laughs> oh, I forgot my. We have Alan, truck searcher. <laughs> and Paul James. Where is he? Paul. Oh, there you are. <laughs> so thank you guys all for coming. We're going to have an artist panel today. Ah, uh, yeah, boo. <laughs> But before we get to that, I have a few announcements. Um, first of all, I want to remind everyone that Open That Box Day is next Saturday. That is the 28th. So if you guys uh, can pick up a box today for next Saturday, we uh, would appreciate you participating. That's on Card Talk. Uh, it's fun to share. You can tell everybody what you got. Uh, share it with somebody in your family. Uh, maybe open a special box, whatever, and it's also good to read uh, what everybody else has opened and gotten out of their boxes. Uh, also, we have um, we have a new show coming up on June 10th called Pop Art Con. It's an artist show. Boo. <laughs> it's our first time running something like this. It's going to be at the Hilton Garden Inn in uh, Fort Washington, right outside of Philadelphia. Uh, we have nearly 20 artists signed up for it so far. You guys can purchase sketch cards, sketch books, artist returns and proofs. You can commission the artists, that kind of thing. Uh, we are partnering up with some manufacturers for this, so we have four show sponsors so far. We have Versicolor Productions, Cryptozoic, we have Brygent uh, Marketing, and Sidekick are all uh, partnering up with us to be show sponsors. Um, there are reservations available for the Hilton Garden Inn right now. We have a great room rate. It's just $109. So you guys should reserve. You only have through... When is the cutoff date? The uh, cutoff date is May 10th. I'm going to try to get them to extend it, but so. seriously, people should start making their reservations. You could always cancel them. And that $109 rate does include breakfast for two. It's a very nice hotel. We stayed there last weekend. And uh, we also have a uh, dinner sponsored by Cryptozoa at the uh, Pop Art Con. The first 100 people who are paid to get into the show will get dinner for free uh, on Cryptozoa. And that's on the Saturday night before the show, which is uh, a Sunday show. Um, we'll be actually selling tickets, I think, uh, to the show on, on the website. So. When you purchase a ticket on the website, then you'll be able to get dinner free as long as you're one of the first 100. Uh, we also will have a few dealers on hand and a few manufacturers, too. So uh, we hope everyone will consider coming out to that. Cryptozoic is sending their um, art director to the show to look at portfolios. So if you think you want to get started on sketch cards, you might have uh, them review your portfolio. Um, if you need any more details, just go to popartcon.com. So um, we have some good stuff coming up in non-sport update. Alan Beagle is going to come up and talk about what's coming up in the uh, upcoming issues. Boo. <laughs> Alan? Boo. <laughs> 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 
How am I doing, French guy, all right? <laughs> Excellent. Now, this is really becoming an international show. We got, we got the Parisians, uh, Harrison, we got the Brits, we got the Canadians, we got one guy from Hoboken, New Jersey. I mean, all over. Anyway, I got a bunch of stuff coming up for you guys. In the next issue, we have eight dozen donuts, three dozen bacon. <laughs> We got a, uh, the issue ships May 9th. We've got a set on tip top surface cards. Where's Ed? Ed would love that set. There you go. Um, music, music, music coming from uh, uh, Famous Fabrics. Mm -hmm. Got it right. Yeah. They got a, a, a redemption card coming in that set. It's a premium set that you guys are not going to believe. It's a really a one of a kind. Really unbelievable. Uh, Warlord of Mars, the uh, John Carter. Yeah, no, I'm not going to think I'm going to buy the magazine. <laughs> 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 Warlord of Mars from Brygen. Uh, it's not based on the John Carter movie. It's based on the comics. So it should be a nice set. And, uh, Tom's got some samples set up at his table. Also, uh, Pulp Detectives from uh, Cult Stuff, Game of Thrones from uh, R.A. Steve hates what I call the company R.A., but it's Rittenhouse Archives. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man, uh, also Rittenhouse. Uh, Dave Thompson's got an interesting piece on licensing that he's doing in his university column. The issue after that, that releases uh, in July, is going to be really something special. We're going to help Top celebrate 50 years of Mayhem uh, with a special commemorative issue almost entirely dedicated to Mars Attacks. So if you're a fan of that set, you're just going to, oh, this issue is going to be a key for you. You're going to love this issue. We've got eight different writers all writing about Mars Attacks with a different spin on it. So it's not going to overlap each other, but they're looking at different aspects from the, from the old, from the very beginnings of the, of the series, all the way up to the new set that's coming out from Tops, the Heritage set. So it, we think it's going to be a really special issue, really something different. Um, we've also got some interviews in there from uh, people who were intimately involved with the product. Uh, uh, from, from the old set, from the 62 set, we've got some people that are working on the new set. You're going to enjoy this. Also, in this very same issue, article on TV show Castle, the hit show from uh, Cryptozoic, uh, Big Bang Theory Seasons 3 and 4, DC Comics 1, Vampire Diaries 2, all coming from Cryptozoic. Uh, Grim, uh, Brian again, uh, should be an interesting set. It's kind of a mix of a uh, cop show and a fairy tale show. Somehow that all seems to work together. Uh, True Blood Premiere Edition from uh, Rittenhouse. And some of the upcoming promos we're going to have are uh, in the issues are Fringe Season 1 and 2, Vampire Diaries Season 2, <laughs> Walking Dead Season 2, True Blood Premiere Edition. What more could you ask for? So, thanks a lot. Keep reading and au revoir. <laughs>
Okay. Uh, can you tell us about your upcoming set, the classic mythology set, what's coming up from your company? Okay, we had just uh, produced our first classic mythology set. It was a huge success, uh, sold out. We were really happy with the results. Um, the artists did a phenomenal job working for us. Uh, we've heard nothing but great reviews from people who bought the set. So, uh, so that's definitely going to inspire us to do the second set, <coughs> okay. classic mythology too. Um, for also, we also have another set in the works called uh, Spellcasters. And basically, it's going to deal with uh, basically any character who uses magic, mystical stuff. So we're thinking voodoo, shaman, uh, anything from mythology, uh, King Arthur type stuff, Morgan Le Fay. Um, so basically, we're going to kind of give the artist more freedom with what they want to draw, as long as the artwork entails that the character is using some sort of magic. You know? So we're, we're hoping that gets good feedback from students. Okay. Great. And Axe, can you tell us about your set coming up? Um, what, which one? Dun the Dungeon Dolls that just released? Or no, no. The, bombshells. Yeah. Bombshells. Um, I would love to say that we're like pushing outside of our envelope, but we're not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're gonna to continue on with what is working for us, which is basically um, cheesecake, and, uh, because I like it. <laughs> it. It seems that... Um, Someone else out there likes it too because this year the uh, Dungeon Doll set literally sold out in about 15 seconds when I opened up the pre sales So the, the feedback and the support and the fan base and the collector base on that has been really strong. And um, so we'll, we'll continue that on with the uh, Bombshell set, which is going to have a military theme. Um, it can be from any civilization, any time period in history, basically. Anything they want to do, kind of like what Tony just said, it's it's fun for me to to give the artists a, a monstrous spectrum to draw from, just a general theme to draw from, and the stuff that comes back is always beyond anything I would have imagined if I was to narrow the focus down. So the only focus is unless there's a subset, which we did for the girls on Dungeon Dolls with the chainmail subset. The only real criteria is that it has to have hot chicks. And other than that, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Re, any, any sets coming up? <laughs> I'm currently working on eight. Are you really? Yes. What are you working on? What? Everything. Everything. <laughs> um, um, what am I working on? Marble Bronze Age from Rittenhouse, House, Bombshells from Axe Bone, Loud, um, and unannounced. An, an unofficially announced set from Cryptozoic, uh, the Walking Dead comic book series from Cryptozoic. I just wrapped up Tarzan for Cryptozoic. Um, what else am I working on? Sweet. Um, no. Just did uh, <laughs> the Tops Canvas collection for Tops, which was my first baseball project, and that's been very interesting. Yeah. How did you like that? <laughs> yeah. How did you like that? How did you like the last one? It was a challenge, actually. It was it was interesting. I, I thought, oh, it's going to be portraits. I've done this. Star Wars, we get to use actor -like likenesses, so no problem. Um, but I ended up taking a lot more time per card than I expected. So it, <laughs> it kind of pushed my schedule back a little bit. Um, but it's, it's always interesting to do stuff like that, to try to push your boundaries and, and really see what you are capable of in very small time. Um. <laughs> Which she's capable of ridiculous things. Mm -hmm. I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's, there's uh, contemporary pinups, which is Ken Galen's first project mm -hmm. under Galen's sketch cards. Um, I'm doing that, and Axel and I are doing some collaboration cards for inserts. Um, yeah, there's a couple others that have not been announced yet, so I can't, can't say just yet. Do it? Okay. Um, so for the Pop Art Con, Axel and I have decided that we are going to do a set together, just the two of us, um, where we are going to have a very small base set and insert sketch cards either by one or through both of us as jam cards, which really? always seem to go over very well. Um, the theme of the, the set is lace. <laughs> well, well then, beyond that will be like steel. Leather. I was thinking leather. Yeah. Um, what comes to mind? <laughs> <laughs> if you want a sneak peek of kind of what that may, may be like, I actually have. What well, would? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> there won't be any of that at my table. <laughs> I 
I have the original art that we used for the back of the sketch cards. Um, so if you want to kind of see what to expect from that, then you can come check that out. That's cool. Today. That will be very limited because we're the only two working on it. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> um, really, that's all the questions I have. I want to open this up for you guys to ask questions. So who wants to start us off? Come on, Tony. How are you going to make the classic mythology available in what avenue? Uh, the same way we did it, we pretty much posted uh, on Facebook, DeviantArt, Scound, mm -hmm. OSU. You know, we made the big announcement. We usually give uh, a few days warning when we're going to solicit the set. And we have a 24-hour window for any orders. We try to make it as fair as possible to everybody. Because we found that a lot of... Uh, dealers wanted to jump in on this one. Uh, if we tailor it just to the dealers, then people who just wanted one or two sets would not have gotten anything. And we didn't want to do it that way. We didn't want the dealers to kind of monopolize the whole thing. So we said, you know what, have some for, for some dealers, have some for the fans, and it worked out great. Uh, we'll probably do the same. What way. is your, your target number? Um, we, we, don't do big numbers for this set. Originally, we were going to do uh, 500 for our first release, but it was so overwhelming, um, we decided to add another 50. And we're probably going to stick around the same number for the next set. So it worked out well, too. And, and the art, like I said, we ended up having uh, extra sketch cards, so it was almost like uh, a one in five chance of getting two sketch cards, a box that people were getting. And plus, there were uh, redemption cards for original artwork for my chase cards that I did, um, the promo cards, all, all five uh, preview, promo, and chase cards were available as redemptions as well. And there were 20 of those mm -hmm. randomly inserted, so we were happy the way it went. Very good. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Come on, guys. Did you want to know about the process? <laughs> I can get involved. <coughs> they don't want to know about the process. <laughs> 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 that, that'll be out of the horror set. <laughs> Next question. Yes, Bill. Um, both Axbon and Tony. Um, how do you solicit artists for your uh, what? series? How do you <laughs> solicit artists? <laughs> <laughs> um, our process was uh, we made a list of artists we wanted to work with, and we sent out a uh, invitation to all the artists. Some of them didn't reply back, so we just figured they weren't interested at all, or they were too busy or whatnot. Um, but we overcompensated for how many artists we wanted, so we basically went for more than less. And it's always better to have extra than you don't know what's going to happen in somebody's life, whether they, they can come across with you know, the commitment or whatnot. So, um, so yeah, we're probably going to do the same thing. Mind you, we've been approached by several artists um, after the first release that want to work on our next release. So you'll see a lot of the same artists, but some new faces too on the next set. So and we're really happy too with what the artists had done. So. Okay. S same thing. I have um, like a wish list that I put together in my mind of who I would like to see on the set if I could put together like my perfect artist list. Um, and I'll always ask those people that are on my personal wish list. And then what I try to do is look to see who the collectors are are kind of following at the moment because it does vary. Um, people have like their, their 15 minutes of fame and then it kind of levels out. But uh, there's always someone that's that seems to be more sought after at the moment. So I'll invite them. I don't always get, like Tony said, I don't always get responses back. Um, and then beyond that, what I like to do is I like to try and find some new people, a small group of new people that haven't done anything before, and kind of give them their first shot because that's kind of how it happened for me. No one was really paying any attention. And uh, Nathan Ollendorf asked me if I wanted to work on his little project. And after that, the doors were like just blown wide open. So it's that's a fun process for me to like extend to someone else. And then, as Tony said, I get emails, I get a lot of email every day from artists that are seeking spots on the set. And I can tell you honestly, I turn away probably five times the number of artists 
I turn the, that number away as to the, the number that are accepted onto the project. But we'll we'll always get solicit more sketches as well, just because everyone has problems, and so you'll always someone will always have to drop off or you'll pick people up. But all of the extra sketches then get inserted into the into the sets that after we distribute them out. So it works out for everybody because somebody will end up with more stuff in their box than they thought. It's kind of a different skill set, though, isn't it? Dealing with other artists as opposed to doing your own art? I'm not sure I'd call it a skill set. <laughs> as I would call it wrangling cats or something along those lines. But it, it is... Training horses has taught me a certain degree of patience. Dealing with artists has taught me even more. <laughs> because if, you would, if I would revert back to who I am in real life during the day, I would be in prison. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting, it's an interesting relationship. Mm -hmm. It's fun to be on both sides of the table, yeah. though, because it has made me, I think, personally, more well-rounded. Yeah. Um, because I can deal with dealers, collectors, distributors, artists in a different way than if I was just trying to hawk my own material. Right. So. Very true. Next question. Elaine. What's the uh, weirdest request you ever got for a commission oh that you can talk about in mixed company? Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody wanted a Family Guy commission, but they wanted Brian and like a bondage or gag, and so I said, no, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I think uh, somebody wanted a, a Circus Olay character, uh -huh. um, but she was actually really fun to draw. Uh, she was. Uh, it was just unusual because it was something I've never seen before, but she was really fun to draw. Mm -hmm. but, the White Singer? Yeah, the White Singer. Oh, yeah, I think really we've all done her. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me yeah. about you. What's the strangest yeah. request you've got? Oh, it, it started off menacing. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, the more emails I got from this one person, yeah, I was like, oh, my Lord. Um, he basically asked, um, you know, how do you feel about drawing a character in a bathtub covered with, you know, bubbles and now you don't see anything? And I'm like, no, that's okay, that seems innocent, okay. Well, how do you feel about drawing two characters in a bathtub? <laughs> like, okay, where are you going with this? <laughs> well, if you showed some body parts, and I'm like, okay, you know what? <laughs> this isn't happening, so. <laughs> And how about if you throw in a duck, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, by the end of it, you know, the, the bubbles were gone. <laughs> so things were happening, and I, I said, I just don't do stuff like that. Really so you sent them to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge commission, by the way. Of course I do. <laughs> I'm not very familiar with anime at all, so I, I tend to not get requests for the Japanese animation characters, but every once in a while, someone will like my work enough and challenge me, I guess. And um, there were three characters he wanted on a 9 by 12 He wanted two of them to be in, like, not suggestive or, or you know, dirty lingerie, but like nighttime kind of clothes, like 90. And then he wanted a broken window in the background. And the third character, he wanted to be tying one of them up to the wall. And the other one was already bound and gagged on the floor. And there had to be broken glass so that it suggested that that person had just come through the window and like rained on their parade and caught them unaware and tied them up. And, um, generally, when I get requests like that, I try to scare them away with how much I'm going to charge. <laughs> and he just threw the cash down. <laughs> I was surprised, but then I was like, oh, well, that takes care of that bill. <laughs> yeah, so, so, so this, yeah, so from now on, I just, I just, I just tell them that that's not my gimmick. Um, and then there was one other request by a guy, oddly enough for another anime character. He wanted her to be 
implied to be to, to implied nudity, but not actually like showing any body parts. She was laying down, kind of like with her her hand resting on her her um, her, her head resting on her hands, and he wanted me to draw his portrait in a thought bubble. Of him. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he had no okay. photos of him to leave behind, and wouldn't stay at the table for so I like I had to draw him from memory. Wow. So I just drew a big yellow smiling face. <laughs> <laughs> Table every year I go to that convention, and he's like, I love that picture I have it on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew it. Um, I need some hand sanitizer, I think, after that. <laughs> uh, what request do I get that isn't weird? <laughs> Originally, I thought I was safe telling people that I would pretty much draw anything that didn't involve kids or religion. And, quickly found out that that didn't cover everything that <laughs> people would ask me to do. Um, I get strange requests every single day, and uh, um, most of them I reject because they, they just, and for me to say it's unsavory, it's unsavory. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of them end up on the floor, <coughs> and the cutting room floor, but like she said, I will. I will often just throw out there. Yeah, I'll do that for four grand, mm -hmm. and they'll go, "Not a problem." What's your PayPal? And I'm like, "You're a sick man." <laughs> <laughs> so I have the IRS contact them as well because you didn't have that kind of money to throw around. But um, I guess the the safest weird thing that that I had been asked to do, which just to me it was weird. The guy wanted me to draw a red balloon, and I. I thought it was a trick. I thought it was some kind of mind test or something that was going to prove I was a mental midget. But I drew what I thought was the perfect red balloon and sent the scan to him, and it wasn't the perfect red balloon. And I had to redo this thing, red balloon like eight times. Just the red balloon. And so finally, um, I, I drew, I can't remember what I did to the balloon, but I did something. I was being a smart ass, and I did something to the balloon, and that somehow passed. The mustard, but that's the cleanest weird thing I think I've ever had to do. Well, if, if you know who those people are you're talking about, you can send them all to Harris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll find that the email matches. Yeah. <laughs> I get a lot of these. Can can you do my wife? Can you draw a commission of my wife? And I go, and I always go, oh yes, I can. But it never, they never want it to be their wife. They want, they want it their wife, but shorter with a different face. <laughs> so I get those all the time. In their mind, I know that they have like this perfect image of what it is that they're looking at or they see when they look at that woman or that person. And you can't capture that, no matter what you do. And so, yeah, there's there's always, always, always commissions that you look at, and I'll show it to like all my friends and family and fans and everybody that hangs around the studio, and they're like, that looks awesome. And then, wah, 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 and back, that's not at all what I wanted. <laughs> so, yeah, it happens all the time. I, am, I get a lot of people can't draw, but I guess wish they could, because they have a super specific vision, mm -hmm. and will send reference, <laughs> and basically tell you that they want that headshot <clears throat> with that body pose in this costume, fighting this villain from this comic book panel, but please clear up the pixels and make the colors blend smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be a four card puzzle that can each stand alone, and, and I go, okay. You know you're going to pay for this, right? <laughs> and, um, and you 
I'd like I, I have a meticulous list of emails. Like anyone who's ever commissioned me, even if they're still waiting, um, I keep every detail they send me. Mm -hmm. And when I'm working on it, I'll bring that up and I'll actually copy and paste up into a Word document so that like, I have like a list on my computer and I like go over it like a checklist. And I make sure that whatever I'm told, I incorporate that. But I also, as an artist, want to you know. I mean, you're, you're asking me to use my talent to interpret your vision, so right. I would hope at least that some type of artistic freedom is allowed, and there have been times where it's just like, that's not what I wanted. And the only difference is maybe there was an extra tendril of hair that curled in a different direction, <laughs> and that was enough to, to put them off, and they wanted me to do it all over again. It's interesting. Some people are very specific. Oh, wow. Well, that's got to be frustrating. <coughs> you Absolutely. Yeah, I, I had one guy commission a library, a specific drawing, they want a specific character, doing specific things, fighting and whatnot. Um, and the thing is, I always do uh, thumbnail roughs. And I usually do about three of them. And I'll scan them, send it to them, and I say, you know, is this what you're looking for? And they'll be like, yeah, I, I like what's going on in thumbnail number two. All right. So I'll, I'll work on the bigger piece. And, and I usually send them, you know, as the process goes, I'll keep them up to date. Here's the pencils. I mean, oh, beautiful. Okay, great. So, you know, this is taking me time, okay? You mind it. This isn't just coming out of thin air. Okay, so, you know, a week later, you know, here's the inks. That's beautiful. I can't wait to see it colored. Oh, okay. So, as I'm coloring it, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to scan it. Not finished, but with some colors on it. Just show him. See, just give him an idea, an update of what's going on. Yeah. You know what? I kind of want to go with something else. Remember rough number two, uh, number three? Can you do that instead? I'm like, you didn't mention that when you were picking out the rough? Like, and it kind of just throws you off. But unfortunately, you don't want to have bad issues with the person who's commissioning you, right? So, because word spreads, and this person's not happy with it. You don't know what somebody's going to say about you to somebody else. So, you kind of just kind of bite the bullet and say, "All right, start from scratch again." It happens a lot, unfortunately. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you, do you, you figure just, that you into, your, into your price then? Because, I mean, when an artist oh. spends so, so yeah. many hours putting oh. Oh, you into, got hit with a, into the beginning, <laughs> that's you got hit with a like paying there, yourself, so. you know. Oh, yeah. So you, you've got to adjust the, the scale well, time is, of the, the, the time price. Is they, right. they, they realize right. that, that uh, well, some people realize. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you try to make you will have a, you will have a percentage of collectors that understand that process and that yep. art doesn't just materialize. But then there's a lot of people that just they don't they they have no conceptual idea of how long that process takes and oh, yeah. what's required. Yeah. And right. you get oh this is just something you can just whip up. No, it's not. Right. You know, it takes time. You got to lay this thing out. You got to make sure everything's perfect. You know, and. Yeah, it, it just gets to the point. But this guy, he, he, I told him, I said, you know what, I did this first piece for you. You liked it up until I started coloring it, and now you're asking for a totally different piece. So I had to charge him for it, and he was okay with it, which was all right. So. Anybody else have a question? Uh, how yes. much of your oh. career yeah. is... Sorry. That's okay. No, go ahead. Is dedicated to this type of art. I mean, do you do other kinds like commercial art, like say you get contacted by I don't know Campbell Soup and you do something for them, or is it just this particular type of artist does a particular type of work? <coughs> Me personally, or I get any of them. I get requests and and inquiries from all kinds of places and people. Last night on my email, I had a request from a company that's making um, microbrewed beer. And they mm. want me to design the label for a microbrew mm. beer, which I'm going to do yeah. because I like the name of their beer. <laughs> they asked me not to talk about, but it's, it's right in line with what I do. So I, I just think that would be fun to see it on a, on a label like that. But yeah, I get I get stuff from like pinups for comics, um, advertising for different companies. I get I get I personally get a lot of different things, um, which is fun for me because it, I, I love doing what we do. But you tend, after a while, you wake up one day and you go, wow, I'm really pigeonholed into this, and I didn't know how I got there. And, uh, I mean, mine just is bigger, a bigger pigeonhole than, like, most people end up in. But um, at the same time, it's nice to get out of it and do other things. So, yeah, I get, I get from all kinds of places. Um, I've done murals in homes. I've 
done ads for certain local companies in Jacksonville, where I'm from. Um, and I've actually had to quit all my other jobs. I work exclusively from home, doing nothing but the sketch cards at this point. Um, since last year, I've been picked up by a few more independent labels and then a few other companies like Cryptozoic. Um, so I now have 13 different companies or properties under my name. <coughs> Um, I love being able to just get up and roll out of bed and walk across my room to my table and sit down and already be at work. Um, but uh, I, most of the stuff that I get asked to do outside of sketch cards is personal. And I prefer doing stuff like that because I really don't like having to deal with tons of paperwork or legalities or contracts. Um, and a lot of times when you get asked to do stuff, like for a big company, like for a, a beer, um, you have to deal with very specific um, guidelines or, or legal whatever. Um, I don't like rules. <laughs> um, so if, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't been asked to do anything like that, but I've been asked to do lots of portraits a little bit. It's been pretty interesting, and I big paintings of things. I got asked to do some giant family crest for Christmas for this month. Yeah, anything larger than a sketch card now is really exciting. <laughs> but, uh, but I still love it, so I don't think I'm stopping anytime soon. No, it's true. It's nice to kind of jump away from sketch cards for a while to do something else, uh, like Axonry. I've done uh, some advertising stuff. I actually designed tattoos for some people. Um, oh, yeah. You know, I've, I've done mural stuff as well. Um, it, it's nice. It's kind of, it gives you a little bit of a break. Um, to work on a larger campus too, you know, mm. to work on the sketch cards. I need glasses now because of you people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's nice just to get a little bit of a break. And you know, I love doing sketch cards. That's that's a big passion of mine. I think 90% of the work I do is in the sketch cards. But yeah, it's nice to do, uh, you know, there's a, a local DJ from Toronto who has his own comic book he's doing. You know, he asked me to do pinups for his book and I was like yeah sure and he's like you know are you available for future work I said of course you know it's bigger it's nice to do it's a different venue it's a nice change so. yeah. I even like it when we do stuff for sketch card companies like with Axbone um, we get to do base card art so even though we're doing sketch cards for the project we're actually doing work that is printed um, so we feel like a bigger part of what's going on and that tends to inspire some of us to have more passion in, you know, what we're giving to that company or we're putting in for them. Um, and then Axe is one of a, a couple, you know, companies I work for that really makes you feel appreciated. And Tony as well. We really thrive on feedback because we want to know, even though, you know, we may be confident in what we're doing, that we're making you happy or making, you know, the people we're working for happy. And um, some companies, you know, they, they let you know if they get your work, but they don't really have anything to say about it. So you kind of just feel like a number. But working for some of the more independent companies who are really excited about what they're doing, and maybe it's a, a new venture or something that they've done a couple times and they're learning the ropes still, um, you get a lot of feedback that makes you feel really, really valuable to what they're doing. And it makes you want to do even more. So. This is an artist I love you more. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, we only have... We have one more question. Yeah, one more. We have time for one more question, and then we can do prizes. So, the uh, gentleman in the back there. <laughs> um, I was just curious if there's any uh, licensed properties that haven't been done as a set that you think would be like a, a great idea to, to come out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to get the license. He's not selling it. <laughs> I'm not saying. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, your answer is yes, too? Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> the question was, are there any... Uh, See great what we learn from the lawyers? <laughs> sets out there, or properties out there that would make a great card set that haven't been done yet. I, you know, I do so much already, I'm not really worried about it. <laughs> she get invited anyway. So I, I, have, I have enough to worry about. I can't think of anything. Um, I mean, I'm sure that there is, and, there, and there's always something different. There's a new TV show, or a movie, or a comic series that's exploded, or, or an independent property that hasn't been touched yet. I mean, like when Tony hit classic mythology, we all screamed with joy. And it was something that's been kind of integral to history, and is incorporated into so many things that we do, but nobody had really thought of it that I'm aware of. And it was like, oh, you're so brilliant. <laughs> <Good. laughs> um, so, I mean, we never know what's going to come out of, from 
around the corner. Um, but as far as if there's anything I can think of, I don't want to. <laughs> I have enough on my plate already. Well, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. She came up with the classic mythology. <laughs> Okay, well, I think that really is about it, because we got to do prizes, we only have about 15 minutes left. So I really want to thank you guys. Thank you very much for doing thank this. I want to thank all of you guys. Stick around, guys. Up here. <laughs>